Come out to the Ian Henderson Antique Mall at 600 South Broad Street. They're open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 or Sunday 1230 to 6. Shop until you drop at the Ian Henderson Antique Mall. If you're currently looking for a place to live, there is a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage house for rent. Also, there is a two bed, one bath apartment for rent. Contact 770-267-7368. Green, green, green. It's your home, it's your dream. Great on testing, keep it healthy and clean. Make it green, green, green. Making it green starts from the ground up. So make sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Test your home for the presence of radon. Go to epa.gov slash radon. Make it green, green, green. There will be an estate sale Friday and Saturday, August the 17th and 18th at 370 Pleasant Valley Road in Good Hope. Come out and see all the household items and tools. This estate sale is presented by the Tollers. season for football. We're having a great time out here this evening. We have a spaghetti dinner going on. 6 p.m. We have the parade starting. We also have Nuckin' Booth face painting.
make some noise! Swing our feet, kick some people. excited about the upcoming year. The boys have been working very hard, the girls have been working very hard, the band has been working very hard, and we're very excited. Our hope this year, in the last two years, we've won 19 out of 24 ball games. Um, the kids sat down in November with Coach Flig, and uh, they set a team goal to winning the state championship, and that, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Um, first of all, we got to win the region championship and move on through the playoffs. Um, we've spent a long, hot summer out there. The kids have been great. Um, we're ready to hit somebody else. We're kind of tired of being in camp and hitting on each other. School has started, and uh, as you can see from the crowd here tonight, the town of Monroe has been behind us. They've always been behind us, and we'd like to hang a banner up down here as a championship football team. Hey, thank you for watching. I'm Dina Huff, the coordinator for the Partnership for Families, Children, and Youth. And today I have Miss Teresa Thompson back with me from the school system. She's the uh, parent involvement coordinator with the school system here in Walton County. And as always, Teresa has lots of good information to share with parents, 
about the new school year and I know all the kids were so excited to get back in school oh, yeah. and parent and uh, Teresa brings us lots of information about uh, what the parents and the kids can get involved in in the mm -hmm. in the upcoming year so mm -hmm. tell us let's get started on what's going on thank you Dina and yes we are back to school in Walton County and we welcome our parents our children and our families back and uh, I just wanted to um, mention a couple of uh, initiatives that are going on in our school district this year and that is a continuation of the Be There campaign that we uh, just kind of have our logo out there with Be There and to remind our families and our parents to be there for their children uh, and to take teachable moments every day. T tell your child you love them and uh, take maybe a stressful moment you're having with your teen and make it a positive one. Uh, just create better relationships and less stress in the family. So. Uh, you can visit our Board of Education website and find the Be There campaign um, website there and find out some more information about that. Um, another initiative we're implementing this year is uh, the PTA standards for family engagement. And uh, there's um, six standards that we work with uh, in our school system this year for building parent capacity in our schools. And one of those, uh, well, the six standards are welcoming all families, communicating effectively, sharing power, speaking up for every child, and collaborating with the community, and communicating effectively. So those six standards we are implementing this year, and, and your parents will hear more about that as the school year continues. And all sound very important yeah, to Yeah, we're family. really excited about that, definitely. Um, uh, another thing I just wanted to mention to parents is we are planning uh, this year some parent workshops as we always do through the Title I program and uh, uh, starting I think in late um, August we'll have our first parent workshop. It's actually a parent meeting. The first one will be held at Carver Middle School but the uh, parent meeting will be held in all clusters of our school district starting with the Monroe Cluster at Carver. Um, then in the Walnut Grove Cluster at Youth Middle School, and then finally uh, at Loganville Middle School, representing the Loganville Cluster. But it's a parent meeting about uh, what's new in public education. It's a two-part meeting. Uh, there's information on our Board of Education website to learn more. But it's just giving parents updates about the change from No Child Left Behind now to the uh, Elementary and Secondary Education Act of um, the Flexibility Waiver. It's kind of a lot to go into, but we'll, we'll share that with parents and, and it's good information for parents to, to learn about, as well as um, uh, career, college and career explorations. And we're starting in middle school with that initiative and uh, wanting to make sure that children graduate on time mm -hmm. and that when they do graduate from, from high school, they either go to college or technical school or into the workforce. Uh, we want our, our students being productive citizens. So. Uh, that's a meeting that's coming up and parents don't want to miss that. Right, right. Yeah. Do you send your newsletters and, and workshop information worksheets home in the book bags or how do you distribute that information? Well, it's actually up to the principal of each school uh, how they disperse this information. Uh, it's pretty cost, costly to try to send home paper copies right. with every student and they don't always get home to parents. Right. So we do rely um, a lot on our, our websites mm -hmm. at our school and our Board of Education websites to uh, get information to parents. And we also utilize some of the local churches will also share the information through the faith community and uh, just collaborating with our community is mm -hmm. what we're trying to do to get information out to parents and to make sure they're kept informed and, and abreast of what's going on in our local schools. Right, yeah. right. Well, that sounds like a, a year full of exciting things. A lot going of exciting on. things. In addition to the uh, parent meeting about what's new in public education, uh, in each cluster again this year we're going to provide a parent workshop on raising a reader and uh, give parents some help and guidelines in um, uh, trying to instill a love of reading in, in their children and what parents can do at home and how they can support the schools with this. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to that. We've got, um, actually a lot of these workshops are based on parent surveys mm -hmm. uh, that we implemented back in the spring of, two, of this year. And parents' comments were repeatedly information about how to raise a reader, um, child enrichment outside the classroom, that sort of thing. So uh, parents will kind of follow our Board of Education website mm -hmm. and uh, call me if you ever have any questions mm -hmm. or concerns. I'd be glad to, to talk with any parents that, that give me a call. So. Oh, great. Yeah. 
Great. Sound, sounds wonderful. And, and like Teresa said, this is information that the parents submitted to the school system through the surveys. So mm -hmm. you put all of this together for the parents. Right. So right. don't, please don't hesitate to contact Teresa, to contact the Board of Ed. Um, and if you, you know, you can't find a number for that, please call us here at the partnership and we'll be glad to oh, connect any family with um, Teresa or anybody and um, get get that information out there because it is important and the reading part is so important to begin so early with our mm -hmm. kids. So. Reading is, is such a, a a valuable thing to be a successful person in life right. just to be able to read uh, from college applications to job applications and everything in Absolutely. between uh, so we, we really want to instill a, a love of reading in our students so mm -hmm. um, and also too, one more thing uh, we do have the, the first edition this year of the parent connection newsletter that's out and about we had distributed a lot of those at the open house uh, mm -hmm. events in our schools last week and uh, again that uh, newsletter is on our Board of Education website and if it's not it will be on our school websites as well so yeah and that always has a lot of even community information yeah. on there yeah. Teresa's so good about getting everything on thank there and, and getting that out to the public so as always Teresa thank you so much for being my guest today and bringing us all this wonderful information for the parents of Walton County and I hope you do um, you know, read and um, call Teresa, attend these workshops because they are here for you and um, we're here for you at the partnership. So if you have any concerns, any needs, any questions, please feel free to give us a call at the partnership. And as always, thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Judy Ashley, Walton County Extension Coordinator here at the Walton County Extension Office at 100 North Broad Street in Monroe. If, as you realize, we've been getting a lot of excessive rain here in the county, at least in certain parts. And if you've been trying to grow some vegetables, you may be experiencing some problems due to this rain. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want it to stop because believe it or not, we are still in the drought levels as far as the water table goes but water can excessive water can cause some problems in the vegetable garden and i wanted to speak to you today on a few things that william carlin and i have been seeing either when people bring these problems into the office or when we go out into the field first i want to refer you to this lovely watermelon here on the table as you can see it has split wide open and it came out of the field this way this is a classic case of fruit split due to over irrigation now this isn't anything that the gardener could have controlled because um, it's mother nature um, at its best. So as you can see when the fruit splits this way, the, the, uh, the watermelon would be inedible or if you were selling them unmarketable for obvious reasons. And so more regular watering, of course, if you're relying again on mother nature, you can't control that. But if you're on an irrigation system, more uh, steady, regular watering would uh, prevent this from happening. Now I want to refer to this tomato and as you can see from the stem there are radial cracks coming out around uh, the tomato and that too is a water issue. Um, there is another type of cracking called concentric cracking which the cracks would run this way around the plant and it's more of an irregular watering issue with the tomato plants but this one called radial cracking is basically due to um, over watering or excessive rain again similar to the problem with the watermelon the fruit the uh, tomato cannot just can, cannot keep up with the growth the water that's being given to the fruit itself and just ends up splitting and again the lower part of this tomato can be sliced off and eaten and it's not harmful at all but if you're trying to sell a tomato like that um, I don't think you would uh, get many customers. So with tomatoes, watermelons, and I'd like to refer to um, a situation that is common in bell peppers and tomatoes called blossom end rot. If you'll bear with me here for a minute. This is the end of the blossom of the bell pepper or on a tomato. This disease happens in tomatoes as well. This is, would be the end of where the blossom is. And you can see on this bell pepper, 
that there is rotting that occurs there and that is due to a calcium deficiency. But you may ask, how is that related to water or irrigation? Well, calcium is taken up in the plant through the root system into the vascular system um, to the developing vegetables. And if there is an issue, there's a, as you know, calcium gives us strong bones. Calcium is in lime, which is in concrete, which gives us strong walls. Well, calcium in plants gives the fruit and the developing vegetables strong cell walls, just as we have um, cell walls in our body. But if there is a problem with the calcium uptake because of long dry periods followed by excessive rain, then this whole system gets derailed, this transpiration system up through the roots into the developing vegetables, um, <clears throat> the, the process goes awry. And because the calcium did not get to this bell pepper, the cell walls do not develop properly in this area. And it ends up with this uh, issue called blossom end rot. Now, a lot of times you may see some rotting issues on other parts of the plant. That would not be blossom end rot because it is specifically starts at the tip, the bottom tip of um, the fruit of the vegetable. So, one problem with this could have been the pH of the soil. And we always recommend a soil test uh, prior to planting your vegetable garden. And if you have soil tested and your pH range was out of whack, it needs to be around 6.2 for vegetable gardens, most vegetables anyway, you could lime your garden um, if it's too acidic and bring it up to the 6.2 range because if the pH is off, that affects the nutrient uptake into the plants. Um, not only of calcium, but of other nutrients that the plant needs as well that could cause other issues down the road. So soil testing a couple months prior to planting, adjusting your pH by applying lime, um, and dolomitic lime is the type of lime that you'd want to apply because dolomitic lime has calcium and magnesium in it. Um, applying the proper amount of lime that's recommended on your soil test results and giving two or three months ahead of planting time for that calcium to be incorporated um, into the soil because it's not going to be readily available if you plant your plants and apply the lime at that time. It's going to take several months down the road before that calcium um, or that lime is able to change the pH of the soil. So you want to do it ahead of time. Also, um, to correct any of these problems, the blossom end rot, the radial cracking, the fruit split of the watermelon, if there's any way possible to regulate your watering, again, Mother Nature does what she does, and we can't control that. But if you're on an irrigation system and um, it's raining, make sure it's turned off so it's not getting excessive water in the garden. Or if you're out of town, <clears throat> make sure that there is um, someone to water your garden or an irrigation system that's on a timer so that it will get regular irrigation. Or some people have even gone to growing under a tunnel, a tunnel uh, greenhouse. And of course, then you can control the amount of water that's getting to the plants by doing a, a drip system in the plant rows. So there are ways, um, some more expensive than others, to control the amount of water. But most of these issues that we've seen here today are due to the fact of irregular water spiking, also uh, fertilization spiking. You want to maintain a regular fertilization program and not have spikes in the fertilization because that also affects the development of the fruits and vegetables at certain stages of their growth. So with all this in mind, uh, just a little regularity in our lives is always a good thing, especially when it comes to the vegetable garden. If you have any problems like this or any other issues, please give us a call at the Extension Office. You can speak with myself, Judy Ashley, or William Carlin. Our phone number is 770-267-1324, and we're here Monday to Friday to answer your calls. Thank you again from the Walton County Extension Office. Hi, I'm Elaine Oates, Director of Keep Walton Beautiful and the Walton County Recycling Center joining you for this week's edition of the Walton Waste Watcher Report. 
Today I want to talk to you just a little bit about plastic recycling because there are some changes going on across um, the state and the nation in general about what kind of plastics can be recycled. And many facilities have, have over the years, they've, they've gotten more technology and they have been able to find ways to separate plastics. Um, they can be co-mingled. Um, but what we have here, the way our recycling center was built, was when they were pretty much um, telling us to source separate. So what we take here at our center in Walton County is uh, we take number ones and two plastics, okay? And I wanted to show you an, some examples of these because the number one plastic are the kind, is the kind of plastic that you're gonna see with your um, uh, beverage containers. This happens to be a dish detergent container that's also a number one. And you can look on the bottom of the container and there will be a little circle with the arrows and it'll have a one inside that little triangle with the arrows. And um, so we take this kind of plastic and then milk jugs, for example, um, have a number two on the bottom of them. This is a colored milk jug, but it's also a number two. And like once again, you can look on the bottom of your container. Now, technically in the state of Georgia, um, some of the facilities are being uh, retrofitted. The larger communities are taking more plastics. But to be quite frank, um, here at our facility, we handle about all we can handle at this point in time because of the, the size of our facility. So we pretty much have to stick with what's tried and true for us here um, at the Walton County Recycling Center. Um, we do like to have you take your con uh, lids off the containers, if at all possible, and rinse them out. And this, this really, the reason for this is really to keep rodents um, and um, things like yellow jackets from getting into the containers because our guys have to actually, um, they have to bail these containers and sometimes, um, you know, we have to keep them stored for a period of time until we get enough plastic to make a bale. Now, um, in the state of Georgia, we ship most of our plastics go to the uh, carpet mills. Um, and for at least for us here in Walton County, but you know they need they use this recycled um, content to help make uh, carpet, and of course there are other things that that, that are made out of recycled uh, uh, plastic. So anyway, if you have any questions about plastics, please give us a call. Um, we take a lot of other items here at the recycling center, and um, and we do. We do ship the items out of here. We don't charge anybody for recycling anything that we don't have to pay for um, at the other end. So uh, basically the items that we take and collect here, um, if you do recycle, you can save some on your uh, garbage disposal fee because um, we, we also charge you know, by volume So um, in our bag system. So if you have any questions at all about recycling or the proper ways to dispose of certain items, please give us a call at 770-267-1421. Thank you. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, this is Dill from Reboot Computer Company and I'm here, I'm here to provide you with a tech tip of the day. Um, we've heard a lot of people ask, what is the cloud and how does the cloud work? Basically what the cloud is, is it's a bunch of computers networked together in a huge warehouse. And what they're designed to do is basically it can range from storing your data um, to running massive websites. Um, the cloud really and truly, the cloud as you know it, um, what it does is it takes your data, let's say for instance services like Carbonite. What it does is it takes your data and encrypts it and sends it off to their privately owned servers. That way it makes it readily accessible anywhere you are. You also have something like the iCloud. What the iCloud does is, is Apple, like your iPhone, takes your contacts, pictures, stuff like that from your iPhone and puts it on Apple servers. That way, let's say you lose your iPhone um, or your iPad or anything that is Apple owned and anything, anything that you had on those, op, on your devices, anything you had would actually be on the iCloud. So let's say you lost it, you know, you're freaking out, everything was lost. You can just turn to your iCloud and say, oh, hey, I have my pictures here. You didn't lose everything. 
So that pretty much sums up the iCloud. Um, if you have any more questions or concerns or anything like that, me, myself, Isaac, uh, any of our coworkers will be glad to help you. Um, our phone number is 770-207-9209, and we're also located on 141 South Broad Street in Monroe, Georgia. Thank you, and this has been Dylan with Detective of the Day. Hi, I'm Jody Johnson, here with the Recreation Report. Uh, happy to hear that uh, our fall sports are uh, underway. Uh, a lot of our teams are out practicing and preparing, and uh, we are st having our uh, yearly jamboree, which is where we bring all our football teams in, and they play a, uh, a half against two different teams, and that's this Saturday on the 18th of uh, August. And uh, it's been great weather for football, not too hot, enough uh, enough water to uh, keep the grass growing, which is a, uh, another big uh, issue here with the uh, Parks and Recreation Department this time of year. The grass just uh, really is taking off, so if you're at one of our parks and the grass is a little high, we apologize, but we'll get to it as quickly as we can, uh, just like it is uh, you know, probably in everyone's yard. It's just hard to keep up this time of year. But our programs are going well. Kids are out participating, which is great uh, uh, for any community when their kids can get out and enjoy sports. Uh, our uh, baseball and softball program is also starting up this week with games along with the, uh, the, the kids that are playing soccer over at Felker Park. So uh, we have a lot of great activities going on uh, with the youth and the athletics. Our community centers are also uh, doing very well. Uh, I want to mention we're setting new, number, new uh, highs uh, with attendance on our senior aerobics programs that's going on, uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at the two community centers two days a week at Felker and two days a week uh, in uh, Loganville. And uh, it's free to the uh, public, 55 and older. Come in and work out at your own pace, and that is a uh, great way to, uh, to socialize and to get fit at the same time. So we invite anyone that uh, wants to uh, get out, get to our parks, uh, get to our community centers and work out. Uh, like it is every time, once we start one program, the game start one, it's time to start thinking about the next program. So uh, we are preparing for our winter uh, sports program, which is our basketball program, and registration will be September 15th through the 22nd uh, at the community centers. You can go to Social Circle, Monroe, or Loganville to register for our basketball program, uh, and the uh, cost is $55, uh, and that provides your full uniform. It provides all the games throughout the year, and uh, we have a, uh, a great turnout usually for our basketball program. So, uh, again, that's September 15th through the 22nd. Uh, times are on Saturday 9 to 12 and uh, Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. Uh, so we invite you to go in. We do have limited space, so uh, please get in there and get registered between the 15th and the 22nd, and uh, we'll hope to have a, uh, another great season uh, of youth basketball. So uh, again, we invite you to uh, go to our website. We have a lot of great programs that are on the horizon at waltoncountyga.gov. It has all of our programs, the cost, all of our facility rentals, uh, that we have. We have about 14 different pavilions that are rented almost every weekend throughout the county. Um, another great news, we are in the process of uh, building our our fifth uh, neighborhood park, which is going to be in Good Hope. We've already installed the playground out there in, in Good Hope. Uh, it's right near the Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, and the parking lot and the pavilions are uh, will be going up soon. So uh, we are continuing to try to provide uh, great recreation throughout the county. Uh, for, for you to enjoy. So um, thanks a lot for, uh, for, for giving us the opportunity to provide recreation for you. And until next time, thank you very much. Hi, I'm uh, Pastor Don Clark, and uh, I am glad to see you today. Today I have with me uh, uh, one of my favorite people in Monroe, who I just learned is actually not a Monrovian. And uh, it is uh, Emily, Emily Russell. And uh, Emily is with the Downtown Development Authority. Is That's that correct? correct. That's correct. And, uh, and you know, last night I was internetting and surfing, Googling, trying to find out what the uh, Downtown Development Authority is. And I didn't necessarily find, necessarily find out, but uh, Emily is gonna tell us exactly what it is that she is doing and, uh, and how she's making an impact here in Monroe, Georgia. Today, we are also at my, one of my favorite places in Monroe, Amici. Now, I have always been saying Amici's, and I didn't know it was a Amici until I talked to mm -hmm. Emily. 
But uh, today we're going to sample some of the food and we'll be, uh, be kind of sharing with you some of the things that we like here. And Emily is going to talk with us, guide us through what the, de the Downtown Development Authority really is. Is that right? That's right. Excellent. So tell me, just real briefly, what is it that you, what is it that you do? Well, my job is kind of fourfold. There's four different parts to the Downtown Development Authority. One of them is promotion. Okay. Promoting downtown through events, um, sales, advertising. So you have what, the concerts and mm -hmm. all Special those events, uh -huh. all that good stuff. Anything to promote the downtown area. Is and you guys have been, now, be. I, now I, this is something that I've noticed that uh, they have been doing an excellent job. Monroe always has something going on excellent downtown. That's it right. is an awesome, awesome city. All right, so um, go ahead. So the Four first follow. thing is promote. Mm -hmm. Promote downtown. Second thing is design. Make sure that the aesthetics of downtown are pleasing to the eye, such as flowers, benches, sidewalks, right. all those things, those small things that make downtown a pretty place to be. Oh, 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 oh here the, food food. Here. the food is here, the food is here. The food is here, the food is here. And some hot wings. Excellent. Wonderful. Now, I am, I am being bad today. Emily looks like a healthy eater. I am not necessarily a healthy eater, so uh, I am, I'm, influencing her hey that's okay <laughs> to, to eat badly so i'm sorry about that uh, so there is fourfold mm -hmm. so the first one being promotion the second one design the third one is organization okay. meaning that we have a board we have a structure that we follow um, we have a budget that we follow and fortunately the city is very kind and gracious with including the downtown development authority with their budget and whatnot. And I actually am an employee of the city. Okay. So that organization is a really yeah. important I see, part. I kind of wondered about that a little bit. Can you tell me which one of those things is, uh, and I know I know that you're new to the mm -hmm. Development Authority, I think it's like four months, am I a little actually, bit over? six. Six months, okay. Six, going on my seventh month, Okay, yeah. so in that time, uh, feet just get kind of getting wet, which one of those things uh, are, would you say is the most challenging? Actually, probably the fourth one that I haven't mentioned just yet, okay, and that would be the economic restructuring part. Okay, okay. And that is making sure that our downtown area has a variety of different types of businesses, mm -hmm. um, that we have storefronts that are not vacant, okay. making sure that we just have reasons for people to invest in downtown. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is probably the most difficult. Right now with the economy the way that it is, people aren't really wanting to open up new businesses or they're not wanting to expand. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we've lost a few businesses recently and, um, you know, saddened by that loss, but at the same time trying to move forward. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, I mean, you know, I, you know, you ride downtown and uh, there are old buildings here mm -hmm. and, and I can understand that, uh, I, now I thought that that was actually what you were gonna say mm -hmm. was one of the most challenging things, the aesthetics of downtown. But, uh, but I, I think that you guys have done a great job in kind of, uh, there's a uniformity that's kind of beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it just really, really looks nice downtown, kind of the kind of place that people, and I think that this is probably what you guys want to do. You want it to have a, a feel that on Friday night that people can kind of come down and walk around right. and that kind of thing. That it's a family friendly place, yes. that it's truly a community. Yes. That it's not just a place to go, but it's a community where you fit in and you belong and you're part of it. That's what we're striving hey, I'm going to try, good I'm to try me. some of these wings. Uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, right. and this, I know what some of you are thinking. This is not a way for me to get free food. I just want to make sure that you know that. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. This is just a great opportunity to sample some actually, of the fine dining that is in downtown exactly right. Monroe. Well, and, uh, and I will probably say this at a later date also. That I believe that the uh, Amici's wings are the best wings in Monroe, and I have I have had many a wing come across my lips, <laughs> and I just believe that these are these are the best. So uh, uh, we are here today sampling that. Well, and when you come to Amici, it's not just the food; it's also the atmosphere. It is very nice place, mm -hmm. pretty place. You know, some of the wood grain and you know just a. a, a, a I'm doing badly on this side. Uh, That's okay. Am I, is this yours right sure, here? Sure, that looks great. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> now they will talk about me on TV forever for dropping that piece of pizza. <laughs> but, well, uh, you might not be able to serve pizza, but, but you can preach, right? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Some say I can. Some say I can. Uh, now, now, tell me something, uh, uh, tell me something, Emily, about um, 
about maybe some future plans that you guys have mm -hmm. for things that are coming up downtown? Um, you know, as far as the structure of downtown goes, one project that we've recently started working on is developing a pocket park uh -huh. on the southern end of Broad Street down there. Wait a minute, explain to me what a pocket park is. A I don't know park necessarily. I know, is I've a heard park, that term. But the idea is that it's just in a small pocket, in yeah. a small area. Oh, um, yeah. You know, it's not going to have walking trails or anything like that, but it's a, it's a pocket of town that could otherwise just kind of go by the wayside and nobody would really notice, but you can turn it into a park and then right. it's a feasible location for hanging out or having lunch or whatever. Emily and I are going to pray right quick. Okay. Father, we ask that you bless this food for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. So the pocket park is going to go... Um, just beyond Dale's Florist and Stan's Music Shop on the right, left there. If right. you drive through that into town, you'll notice there's a tall lattice wall. Right. We are actually in the process of acquiring that piece of property through a lease. Okay. And we're going to turn that into a pocket park. Wow. So look for that to come soon. Now, would that, would that have any... Um, Maybe some things for the kids to kind of play around in and that kind of thing? It's probably going to have some benches. It's a, it's a really small piece of property, mm -hmm. so we're just going to start with kind of revitalizing it. It actually has an old safe that is still intact there right. where it used to be a jewelry store. Okay. So it's a really neat thing that we're hoping to restore and keep the original architecture of it. Now, now tell me, I have noticed trolleys downtown. Mm -hmm. Is that something that, um, that is something that you guys have been working with? It is. And tell me about that just a little bit if you mm -hmm. know. It's something new. Um, basically, we found that downtown Monroe had become a mecca for antiques. Right. There are tons of antique malls, and, and we're not just talking about junk malls. These are nice, high quality antiques. Right. So, in order to kind of promote tourism for the antique world, we um, acquired this trolley that runs on the first and third Saturdays, and it connects all of the downtown antique malls to one another. I just, a few weeks ago, I was in Savannah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they had a trolley kind of running in right. Savannah, and, uh, and I, thought, I thought then, I thought, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing, and then I come back home, and then I see a trolley riding around in the road. That's right, that's right. And um, we were lucky to have some uh, local sponsors come through on that. Cherry Hill at the Mill Antique Mall mm -hmm. and um, the Engine Room okay. as well, which is also at Monroe Cotton Mills. They are the ones that kind of sponsored it. Yeah. We said, hey, this is an idea, we want to do it. And they stepped up to the plate and said, hey, we'll make it happen wow. for you. So that's been an, an excellent asset just to say that we have a trolley, we have an attraction mm -hmm. for people to come into town. And that is enjoy. awesome. Mm -hmm. Speaking of awesome, oh, this pizza, the pizza is awesome. The pizza is very good. The pizza is very good. But the wings, I think, will top it all. Now, uh, you said that you've been at the job for? A little over six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you know, I know on, on, on television you're probably going to say, I love my job. I do. But has, has the transition been challenging? It has been challenging. Um, transitioning from the world of working with the schools and right. with children every day, mm -hmm. that has definitely been an interesting transition to, to um, come into the grown-up world every day. Right, right. <laughs> well, you know one of the things that I've said about people that are moving into particular positions and, and when they get there, uh, maybe it's a, it's just, it might be a job that's a little bit difficult. They might have big problems to solve. But one of the things that I've always said is that people wouldn't have got you for the job if, you, if they did not think that you were able to solve the problems. And I'm, I'm quite sure that, uh, that you're able to solve the problems. And I'm believing that downtown is going to be awesome. Well, I hope so. Because I, hope so. I think we're well on our way. And, and, you know, it's not just one single person. It's not just me or whoever's <laughs> in this position. It's really the whole community working together. The business owners, the property owners, um, just everybody coming together to make Monroe a vibrant place. To so be. let me ask you a question. I know this is probably top secret. When is Chicago coming to town? Chicago? Yeah. Chicago. What about Chicago? The, the, the band. Mm. Oh, Chicago. Yeah. Uh, are there plans? They're, they're not plans, obviously. Okay. They're a little bit out of our okay. price range. All right, okay. All right, yeah. I'm sorry. But if we want to recruit Chicago, we are always accepting sponsorships. That's, that's we awesome. would love Do you guys that. do that for real? We do. We do. That's how we actually make all of our special events possible. Okay. It's through private donations from individuals and from businesses and from properties and whatnot. Mm -hmm. 
So that's actually how we're able to have all of those great special events is through our sponsors. So um, do you have a certain amount of, um, you guys have a certain amount of concerts that you have planned for year or is there a concert season? There is that is. the way that you guys do mm -hmm. that? May through September, the first Friday of each of those months, mm -hmm. we have a concert. So there's generally five concerts in all. Okay. Now this year, our July concert was cut really short because of weather. Mm -hmm. So we actually rescheduled that for this coming Friday, the 24th. Okay. So we hope to see people out for that. Anything come up? Uh, that we, and I'm talking with my mouth full, my mama would be mad with me. Uh, <laughs> is there anything coming up that uh, that you might want to let the people that might be watching right now mm -hmm. know about? Definitely the concert on the 24th, which is Hack, Bartley, and Shuffle. Um, they, uh, Hack is one of the original Swing and Medallions. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of great party now music. Now you guys have had the Swing and Medallions here. We have, okay. and they will be back okay. on September the 7th, which is our last Friday concert of the concert series. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, those are our two really big events. So Hack Parker is coming. Hack Bartley and Shuffle. Hack Bartley. Hack Bartley and Shuffle. <laughs> they are coming on August the 24th, and then the Swing and Medallions will be here on September okay. the 7th. Excellent. Um, and also our Farmer's Market continues every Saturday through September. Okay. Um, that that'll probably kind of wind up the end of September, beginning of October. So how do they? How and I'm glad you mentioned that. How is it that that? Uh, how does that work? How do do you have certain vendors that have signed up for this? We do. Are you uh, always accepting vendors? We are. We are. We kind of accept them on a rolling basis on the um, on the kind of instance that they have to be local, okay. meaning they have to have either grown or produced their products here in Walton County or in one of the neighboring counties mm -hmm. to Walton, because um, we truly want it to be a farmer's market that is locally grown. Mm -hmm. um, so we even visit some of the farms of our farmers just to, you know, make sure that they're doing everything that we ask them to do as far as making and producing their own stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're always accepting vendors. We also accept art and craft vendors. Um, but again, they, we ask that they be local and that they actually physically make all of their own. Now, goods. this is the first year for that. It is the first year for the Monroe Farmers Market. Um, there were some other farmers markets before in Monroe, mm -hmm. um, but this is the first time that the Downtown Development Authority has actually taken on the market and made I it think, their own. I think that it's going to be awesome. It's been great so far. Yeah. Every Saturday, we have anywhere between 20 and 30 vendors. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been a great And where are they located at? They're, I think I've seen them, but mm -hmm. I want to make sure. They are on Court Street. Okay, that's next to the courthouse. Is exactly. That Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. We actually close off the street and um, we have the tents all the way down Court Street wow. on Saturdays, 8 to 1. That's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I, I've, I've driven by, seen a lot of cars mm -hmm. there. Uh, I have yet to actually visit, but but it looks like the, uh, that it's moving well. Pretty stop well. on by. Okay. Um, we'll we have, yeah, there's all sorts of great, great products that you can get. I believe this Saturday we're going to have goat cheese. Muscadines, all sorts of different things that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So, excellent, excellent. Well, uh, is that it? You, anything else going on That's that pretty we need much to know it about for downtown Monroe? And you know, if anybody ever has any questions. We have a really fabulous website that they can check out, mm -hmm. and that's MonroeDowntown.com. Okay. You can learn all about the DDA, our events, our projects that are going on, the farmer's market, the trolley, the concerts, whatever it might be. They can also follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook. Now, who, who's the one that's doing the tweeting? I can't reveal who our tweeter Tw Twitter is. is. Okay. <laughs> all right, excellent. <laughs> it's Monroe Downtown. <laughs> I got you. I understand. I understand. That is awesome. So we're, we're glad moving to into it. moving into the future. That's right. Tweeting. What do you Stay want? That is that is awesome. Awesome. So uh, listen, thank you today for joining us. I'm so happy that Emily uh, took the time out of her schedule to, yeah, to be with us today. Me. And um, and one of the things that I want you to know, and we'll be talking about it in a future broadcast. Uh, Amici's is here downtown. Uh, great food, great atmosphere. Come and be a part of what's going on down here. Come and. Um, uh, sample the food and uh, uh, I'm sure that you'll love it. I'm sorry that you were not able to sample what we <laughs> had today. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much for dropping in with us. Hello everyone, Frank Whitley, Walton Entertainment Sports and all you Monroe Area sports fans who usually attend the annual Steak Supper Fundraiser sponsored by the Monroe Area High School Booster Club Take note, the Booster Club has moved the event to October. 
Booster Club spokesperson Karen Brown told me the event will take place in October. The Booster Club is hoping to use the first weekend of that month for the uh, annual fundraiser. The Steak Supper fundraiser has always been held on the uh, Thursday night before the Purple Hurricanes first football game of the season. So keep that big change in mind of moving the event to October. Walton Entertainment will have PSA announcements about the fundraiser starting in September. Frank Whitley, Walton Entertainment Sports. Hey there, I'm Emily Russell, Main Street and Downtown Development Authority Coordinator for the City of Monroe. Thank you so much for joining us in downtown today. As always, we boost a wonderful place for you to come and shop, walk around, enjoy the downtown area, have lunch with us, dinner, bring your family, friends, whatever it may be that brings you downtown. We're just glad to have you. We have a couple of very special events coming up in the very near future. On Friday, August the 24th, we will be hosting Hack, Bartley and Shuffle. They came and did a concert for us in July and unfortunately the show was cut short and canceled because of rain. Um, that evening. So we have rescheduled it for August the 24th. The opening band will be Power Play Band, which is a local band. They play some good music and then that will be followed up by Hack Bartley and Shuffle. Hack Bartley is one of the original swinging medallions, so it's great party music, beach music, a little bit of blues and Motown mixed in there. Just an all around great event to come out to. So again, that is Friday, August the 24th here on the Courthouse Lawn. As always, we have VIP seating available. You can just contact us at the Development Authority office for that. So we hope to see you downtown for that. Additionally, our farmer's market will be continuing all the way through September. Please come out on Saturday mornings from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have everything from fresh goat cheese to grass-fed beef, um, all sorts of different things. Lots of great produce, craft, and artisan vendors for you to visit with. And everybody is local. Everybody is from Walton County or right around in one of our surrounding counties. So we just invite you to come and be a part of our farmer's market that happens each and every Saturday. Also, our Antique Rail runs the first and third Saturdays of every month, and that will be through September as well. So a few more times to ride the Antique Trolley through downtown Monroe and shop antiques while riding the Antique Trolley. So we encourage you to come out and do that as well. And last but certainly not least, on September the 7th, we will be hosting the Swingin' Medallions right here on the Courthouse Lawn. It's always an awesome concert, just a really great time. We do have some limited VIP seating and it's filling up quickly. So please call and reserve your table today. Uh, we want to make sure that you get an upfront, close, and personal seat with the Swingin' Medallion so that you can enjoy that with your friends and family. Um, so as always, downtown has a little bit of everything to offer. As you're going back to school this week and next and getting ready for the fall, don't forget to shop in downtown. Um, Clara Bell's has some really wonderful back to school backpacks and pencil sets and lunch boxes, all things that can be monogrammed with your child's name. Um, Mike Cash has office supplies, school supplies that you might possibly need. If you need a good homework or a study desk for your child to sit at after school to do that homework at, Sanders Furniture is the place to go for all of that. Um, so there's just a lot of different opportunities here in downtown Monroe and we really hope that you will consider shopping with us when it comes to any sort of need that you might have. Um, support your local businesses, support your local economy. We just encourage you to come and be with us downtown, not just on our special event days, not just to do something special, but for just any time, any time that you might have any sort of need to come downtown and have that filled is, is what we're hoping for. So please come and join us downtown town and we look forward to seeing you. Hey thanks for tuning in today we're going to show you dogs and cats that are available for adoption here at Walton County Animal Control. You know it's the end of summer and there's been a lot of kittens and puppies that are coming in and so we're still getting we have a lot of puppies as you'll see today and so we're currently running a, a two-for-one adoption on all the puppies and all the kittens and so for just forty dollars you get two puppies or two kittens uh, all of them get vaccines both of them get dewormed both of them get a microchip if you want and both of them can get uh, discounted spay and neuter and so there's no reason to, to not come down you can adopt two for yourself or maybe you and a neighbor or you and a friend want to go in together so come on down to the animal shelter 
Uh, it's at 1411 South Madison Avenue, right behind the Sheriff's Department in Monroe. Uh, you can come down any afternoon from 2 to 5 to see what we have available, or you can always look online at waltonpets.net and see what we have available for adoption. Uh, we have us a young domestic short hair male kitten, about six or seven months old. He's real loving and his name is Tristan. This is a female. She's probably about four months old. She is not spayed. Um, she's very sweet. She's purring right now. We have several ages of kittens that need homes fast. You need to come in and pick one out. This here is Angel. She's a four month old boxer mix. She's really sweet, really loving. <laughs> she could really use a good home. This is a Warmeriner puppy, about four months old. There's several other litter mates we have. Um, looking for a good home. They're all four months old. Cavalier Spaniel Mix. It's a male. He's about a year old. Very sweet. Um, needs a good home. Got us a nice little puppy here. Brindle. Black. Young. Ah! <laughs> Looking for a good home and a lot of attention. This is Chloe. She's a four month old Weimariner mix. She's really sweet. She could really use a good home. There will be an estate sale Friday and Saturday, August the 17th and 18th at 370 Pleasant Valley Road in Good Hope. Come out and see all the household items and tools. This estate sale is presented by the Tollers. Come out to the Ian Henderson Antique Mall at 600 South Broad Street. They're open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 or Sunday 1230 to 6. Shop until you drop at the Ian Henderson Antique Mall. If you're currently looking for a place to live, there is a three bedroom, two bath, two-car garage house for rent also there is a two-bed one-bath apartment for rent contact 770-267-7368 creative signs we make large and small property and business signs full color digitally printed banners as well as vinyl lettered ones for celebrating special events yard signs for selling your home or making special announcements like your graduating senior. Turn your vehicle into a moving billboard with vehicle lettering or magnetics. Creative Signs, Monroe, 770-267-7368. green starts from the ground up, so make sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Test your home for the presence of radon. Go to epa.gov slash radon. Make it green, green, green. Do you have a collection of films and videotape sitting in your attic, basement, hall closet, or a box somewhere that are being lost to time? Creative artists can transfer your 8mm, Super 8mm, and 16mm films, as well as converting your VHS, CVHS, 8mm, and Mini DV to DVD. Preserve your family's video history for the generations to come. Creative Artists, 1113 West Spring Street, Monroe, 770-267-7368.